Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful morning. It is good to be together again. I'm Pastor Jen, for those of you who have not yet met me. I'm glad to have you with us at worship today. I invite you to stand as you're able as we begin with our gathering hymn, which is either in your hymnals, number 798, but it's also in the back of your bulletin. Please stand as we sing. Have you ever 
ever been to the movie theater? Yeah? Well, one of the things that I've always noticed about movie theater is I love their popcorn. Do you like movie theater and popcorn? And I was trying to think about, like, why is movie theater park popcorn better than my popcorn at home? Do you think that's true? Is, your movie, is the movie theater popcorn better tasting than the ones that you have at home? Yeah. yeah. And then I was thinking about what they do with movie theater popcorn that I don't do as much at home. They put a lot of butter on it. Did you know that? At the movie theater? Yeah. And I love butter. And they put a lot of salt on it. And I think it is salt, right? And I just love salt. So what does salt do that might make the taste of movie theater popcorn taste better? Yeah. Maybe it, um, the, it just adds a different taste to it. It adds some taste to it, right? Yeah, now I could get it unsalted, right? Mm -hmm. But to me, some people like it better unsalted, but to me it just doesn't taste that good. So let's think about when Jesus tells us that we are to be salt. I wonder what that could mean. Any idea? I'm going to ask you to think about it as I think what I've been thinking about is one way that we're salt is that we're kind of spicy. We're alive, right? We're full of flavor. Like the popcorn that's full of taste, right? So, after Sunday school today, you're each going to get a bag of popcorn. And this is even better than the movie theater popcorn because it's cheesy popcorn. And that even adds even more spice. But it's to help us remember that Jesus calls us to be salt. To give us more taste in the world, like the salt on popcorn. So let's hold our hands and say a prayer. Dear God, help us to be like salt in the world and for the world. Amen. You can go to Sunday school if you'd like, or stay here, whichever you prefer. I invite us all to stand as we sing our song of praise, This is the Feast.
What constitutes legitimate need and legitimate leadership, leadership is the focus of this reading. God provides manna in the wilderness, yet the people crave meat. What is truly needful? God bestows the spirit on 70 elders, yet two men not designated as leaders prophesy in the power of God's spirit. What constitutes real leadership? This is the reading from Numbers. A rabble among them had a strong craving. And the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Yet did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them, that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom? as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised to oath to our family, to our ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they came weeping to me and said, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you're going to treat me, Put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So the Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to them and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone up to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the chosen men said, my Lord, Moses, stop that. But Moses said to them, to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. Your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off, 
It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. You know, one thing that came really clear to me this week is that some of the best preaching comes from people who've never been to seminary. Have you noticed that? At times that you hear a message or you see an action of living out the gospel from someone who has never been to seminary. This happened to me last Sunday, and the preacher's name was Al. Mia is in our confirmation class, and I'll embarrass her for a minute and say one of the things that I'm hoping that we will do in confirmation this year is visit Common Cathedral, which is an outdoor worship service in Boston. The congregation is primarily those who are either walking around, tourists, or people who are homeless, unhoused. So there are housed and unhoused people worshiping together. Now, before taking the confirmation class, I wanted to experience it for myself last week. I was running a bit late. I'd seen on the website that this congregation meets at Brewer Fountain on the common. And luckily, my GPS had a direction to Brewer Fountain on Boston Common. But it wasn't exactly where it was. So I went and, went and walked through Boston Common for a while, asking people for various fountains that they knew about. Eventually, I knew I was late, but I could hear a microphone. And there was someone speaking in the microphone. So I gathered this is probably where I'm headed. Off to the side of the preacher there, there was someone tuning a guitar. There are about 30 or 40 people sitting on park benches and at tables and chairs in front of the preacher. There was a wooden cross about this high on the sidewalk. There was also an altar, which looked like a cart on wheels. So as I came up to that place, I sat down on an empty park bench and began to listen and realize that's the same gospel we heard last week in, su in church on Sunday. You may remember this, the gospel about the disciples arguing about which is the greatest. Well, the pastor was reading that same gospel reading. But she did something different when she stopped reading that gospel reading. She looked around and she said, does anyone here have a word to share? Is the spirit speaking to any of you here about that gospel reading? That we just heard. Well, it took two or three invitations before someone actually came forward. But then a tall, lanky man came to the microphone. If you look at the cover of your bulletin, you'll see a picture of him. His name is Al. Now I know that because this is what he said. He said, hello, my name is Al. And then he said, I know this, I know there is a God, and I know his name is not Al. <laughs> Simple message. But for me, who is wandering around Boston calming, carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, wondering how I can fix everything that's wrong with everything, <laughs> what a moment of grace to hear from God, from Al, 
and from God that I'm not the one in charge. There is a God, and her name is not Jeanette. Sometimes the best preaching comes from those who have not been to seminary. In our readings that we heard today, we hear two examples of people who are trying to stop God. First, we heard in the book of Numbers. Now, the book of Numbers is filled with people complaining on their journey. Right? The Israelites who have been enslaved in Egypt are making their way to the Holy Land, but nothing goes right. They're hungry. They're thirsty. Things are always better back in Egypt from their memory, which, of course, was not true. Moses is exhausted at the complaining of the people. And so he hears the rabble <laughs> complain once again, and he goes to God and says, what am I going to do? And God says, it's not up to you. Gather 70 people, elders, gather them together. So Moses does what he said, he gathers 70 people, and they do what's right. They go to the tabernacle, to the tent, to the place of worship. They go to church, and there God gives God's spirit to the people, the elders. That's the way it's supposed to be, right? They're supposed to have the right procedure, the right protocol before they speak to others, things of God. But apparently two other guys didn't get the message. Eldad and Medad. Isn't it interesting that we know their names? Don't know the 70 others, but we know Eldad and Medad's names. They don't go to church. They don't go to the tabernacle. They don't go to the tent. They stay in the camp. And they preach. They give a word from God. Now, Joshua is Moses' right hand. He says, make them stop. They're not doing it right. But Moses said, would that all people, all of God's people, be prophets? The first story. And then we get to the second story in the Gospel of Mark which Jesus has a bunch of hyperbole, which sound pretty awful to our ears, right? Cutting off limbs, going blind. But the message I'd like to bring to you today is what happens, again, when some outsiders decide to preach. We're told that there are some people who are casting out demons. And the disciples complain to Jesus, but, you know, they're doing it in your name, but, but they're not with us. They're not doing it the right way. And once again, Jesus says, whoever is not against us is with us. Let them preach. And then he goes on to say that they are salt. And so are you. He says everyone is salt. Everyone has been salted with fire, which again sounds like a weird thing to say. But think about Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit, and the flame, the fire that goes on each of Jesus' followers. Each of us has been salted with the Spirit. There was an ancient ritual at the time of baptism of salting the baby. Have you heard of that? The priest would take a little bit of salt at the time of baptism and put it on the infant's tongue. It's a symbol of the spirit coming to that infant as they are baptized. Also, it's a word against the spirit of the devil. Salting the baby. Now, we don't do that anymore. But all of us have been salted with the spirit from the time of our baptism. So what message are we preaching? Because sometimes the best preaching comes from people who have not been to seminary yet. Think about it. I heard some other preaching that last Sunday. It came during the time of the prayers. And one person came up and said, I just want to pray for healing and for breathing. I don't know when I've ever prayed for breathing. Someone else came up and said, you know, I just want to pray for Frank 
that he has a good day today. I don't know about you, but I have to wait till something really serious happens before I pray for people sometimes. Can't we just pray for Frank that he has a good day today? Someone else came to the microphone and said, I just, I just want to pray for Dolly Parton. To give thanks for her generosity, that she gave money to help with vaccine research. I've never prayed for Dolly Parton before. Sometimes the best preaching comes from people who've never been to seminary. We have been salted, salted with the Spirit. What is the message that we will preach this week? Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our hymn of the day.
caused streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
and it's picking the, the video for which is going on to the live stream. So it's not as complicated as it seems. Youth that need service hours, this is a great opportunity to serve in that way, um, but all are welcome. Also, Tom Schauer, I believe, has an announcement. I have three things. Oh. <laughs> uh, number one, Mia Locke did a great job in accolading. Awesome. <laughs> should be the last week that I have to make an announcement. Uh, um, for the special meeting that we have today at 11.30, it is on Zoom, and the Zoom log on information is in forward with faith. But I've been asked to let everybody know, especially those of you at home, if you're going to be on Zoom, please be patient with the start of the meeting. The, 10.30 service will end at approximately 11.30, maybe a few minutes early, we don't know. But then the band has to move their equipment out and the Zoom equipment needs to be moved in. So it probably is not gonna start at exactly 11.30, but when you go on, it'll, it'll say the host has not started the meeting or something to that effect. So please, just be patient. The, it will be on Zoom, okay? Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.